All right. For those out in the uh, in the lobby, I know you're doing the uh, ministry fair and all that. But if y'all can come on in and find a seat, we're going to kick off here in about 27 seconds. Let me hear it this morning. Yeah. I want to welcome you back to winter. Yes. Northwest Florida said, psych. So it's winter time again, just for about a day or two. Then it'll be 80 degrees. All right. I am excited to be here. I'm excited to worship guys. So let's sing out this morning. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came. Tell the world of his great love, our God is a God. 
Sunday. During our worship and sermon, you'll hear about several ministries here at Gateway that are directly connected to our surrounding community and ways that you can be involved in those ministries. So be listening out. March 16th is the Gateway Student Ministry Spring Break Hangout at the Get Air Trampoline Park in Mobile. See Seth Medeiros for more details. Our next Without Walls ministry will be on March 18th during spring break from 11 until 1230. A group from Gateway spends time at the College Trace Department, building relationships, laughing, playing, and fellowshipping in the name of Jesus. It's a beautiful way to build community, and we would love for you to join us. For more information, please stop by the Without Walls table in the gathering space today and see Kelly Key. Rock Kids, on March 18th from 7 to 11, we will have a Nerf battle here at the building. Bring a Nerf gun, ammo, and $5 for pizza. Sign up today and see Liz Tomlinson for more details. On March 20th, we will have a Gateway Children's Ministry training during the afternoon. Lunch will be provided, but we need you to RSVP at the Connect Centers after worship. This will be for all volunteers. Child care will not be provided for this event. If you've ever wanted to serve in the children's ministry, this is the perfect opportunity for you to get involved. During this series entitled Next Steps for the month of March, we want to remind you to scan the QR code in the bulletin or grab a form from the Connect Center if you're interested in placing membership. We would normally request interested visitors to attend the class, but for this quarter, all you need to do is enjoy the sermon series. If you have any questions, please see Seth Medeiros. Continue to pray for our senior minister, Jeremy Kuhn, as he is on his sabbatical. Pray that he receives the rest he so well deserves, that he is able to connect with the Spirit in refreshing ways, and that he remains safe in his travels. If you'd like more info on anything going on here at Gateway, stop by the Connect Centers and talk to a team member. Have a great day, Gateway. Play. Oh, my mic was slow, and I think all of us are still asleep. I know that the time change messes us up, right? Uh, so let's try that again. Good morning, Gateway. Good morning. All right, that's getting better. Today is a day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, won't we? Uh, even, even though it had the time change this morning. Um, you know, I was thinking about that after my alarm went off three times and I reset it three times. Uh, I didn't know why. Uh, thank God we have phones that change our time for us now, because uh, otherwise I would have just slept in. Um, but when our alarms kept going off this morning, I was thinking, you know, sometimes it's hard to get up and get going. Um, you know, I, I think it gets harder sometimes because we do sleep in. You know, if we just had a purpose, if we had a reason to get up, isn't it easier whenever you have that? If you have something planned, you're like, oh, I have this plan, so I'm going to get up and get going. But otherwise, you just, you just keep sleeping. And I was thinking about that on the way here this morning. I thought, you know what? That's sometimes how we are spiritually. You know, a lot of times 
we have things that we could be doing. We have things that, that we could be focusing as our purpose, but we're just sleeping. We're, we're relaxed. We're, we're, we're not taking the effort to do those things. So I wanted to share two scriptures with you this morning. And I hope it helps you. Uh, the first one I'm, I'm kind of using, and I think that you might hear it again because it is one of Seth's favorite uh, passages of the scripture, uh, but Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 in verse 10, it says, For we are God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things that he planned for us long ago. Do you believe that, church? You are God's masterpiece. I, I, I know sometimes I look at it and I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm something that God created. But, you know, God doesn't create anything but masterpieces. And each one of you here, God created you, so you are his masterpiece. He created you for those good works that he planned for you so long ago. He created those good works that you, with all your scars, with all your, your failures, with all your strengths, with all your weaknesses, with all the good things that you're able to do, God created you for those good works. And it's time for us to wake up and do them. You know, he goes on in Ephesians chapter 5, guided by the Holy Spirit, Paul writes this, verse 8. For you were once full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. <clears throat> so live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord and take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. And then dropping down to verse 14, it says, For the light makes everything visible. That is why it said, Wake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but live like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity, especially in these evil days. Don't act thoughtless, but understand. God created you for good works. You are his masterpiece. You are light. Take the opportunity to wake up. You know, whenever I was looking at uh, everything out in the foyer today, our, our, our greeting space, right? Whenever I was looking out there, you see all those tables set up. There are a lot of things that we're doing here at Gateway, and that's exciting, isn't it? Amen. That's exciting, isn't it? There are a lot of great things that we're doing. There are a lot of things that you can plug in and you can help with. Awake. Wake up. Do those things. You know what? Some of those things may not fit what you're made for, what God made you for. So there might be things you're thinking, hey, I'm really good at this, or I can do this. Then do it. Today we have that opportunity. Live as children of life. God created you for a purpose. You're here this morning for a purpose. Let's make sure that we encourage one another to do those things that God created us to do. So we're going to greet each other this morning. We're going to stand up. We're going to love on each other. I want you to do one thing. I want you to remind the person next to you, the person that you're talking to this morning, that they are also God's masterpiece. And whenever you leave this place this morning, I want you to remind the person that you see later on that they are God's masterpiece. Because we have that opportunity. We should take the most of it. Love on everybody this morning. Hug each other. You are God's masterpiece.
Let's go to our Father in prayer. Dear God, our Father, we, we praise your name. We love you because you loved us first and gave your Son for us. We'll never be able to measure up to that sacrifice, Father. We love you. Father, we thank you for it today. It's cold as it is, but it's clear. And we're in a safe place, warm, and in a good atmosphere. We pray we take advantage of this in praising you in song, in prayer, in meditation. Father, we pray that you would be with the leaders of this congregation as they lead us into a real mission to spread the good news of your Son to those who are lost. Father, we pray for... Seth, as he brings to us a message of our mission in this community and around the world, help us be attentive and take it to heart and pursue that mission. Now, Father, may the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, which we do all in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Let's now prepare our minds to uh, gather around the Lord's table this morning together as we partake of communion together. We're calling this Service Sunday, and I know that uh, many of us are involved with a lot of things here in the church, and uh, there's a, an idea of what all is going on out there in the lobby uh, here at the church. Why do we do that? Do we do that just to make you busy? No, not really. Um, we do it because this song, people need the Lord. Amen. Amen. And um, how else are they going to hear about it unless we bring it, bring it to them? So that's what all these uh, ministries are about. People needing the Lord and bringing, bringing people to the Lord and bringing Jesus to them. So as we commune, let's think about that. We're going to sing this in Mighty to Save. And that song says, everyone needs compassion. A love that's never failing. And we can give that to them. Let's all stand. We're going to sing this song and then we'll commune together. People need the
How many times throughout the course of his life do you think the Apostle Thomas said, I saw the wounds of God? Thomas famously said in John 20, not unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger in, it, in the nails, where the nails were, in my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now we know a week later that Jesus stands before Thomas and says, put your finger here. See my hands. And Thomas, confronted by the presence of the risen Jesus, says, my Lord and my God. From John chapter 20, verse 29. As soon as this comes up, sorry. So this is what Jesus told him. Because you have seen me, 
you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet believe. That's us. Jesus is standing in front of Thomas and he looks out across eternity to this room, to this time, to be with us. We have what we call the elements of communion. A little bit of bread, a little bit of wine. We hold in our hands the symbols of the wounds of God. And we, like Thomas, say, my God and my Lord. Let's pray. My God and my Lord. We thank you for this time that we can remember the sacrifice of Jesus. That you have given us these elements to remember his broken body and his shed blood. And we pray now that you would bless us as we partake of them. And we do this in his name. My Lord and my God, we thank you that you have given us these symbols of the wounds that Jesus suffered. We pray now that you would bless this through the vine that we will use it to remember the blood that was shed for our sins. And we do this in his name. Amen. I'll just shout. Oh, there it is. The good thing I didn't shout. Um, in Acts chapter 16, Paul has an encounter with two people, or two groups of people. Lydia is one, and then people simply called masters because they owned a slave girl. We learn very quickly that Lydia is wealthy. She sells things. We also know that the masters are wealthy because they use the slave girl to obtain wealth. Paul introduces Jesus to Lydia and she immediately takes her wealth and she opens up her home to become radically hospitable. She opens up her home to be a church. She becomes a hub in the province of Philippi for people to come through and to experience the goodness of God using her wealth for that. When the masters lose their form of wealth, they beat Paul and they take them and they throw them into jail. Wealth is to be used as a resurrection people. We are surrounded by wealth. How do we use that? That's the beauty of what offering is. Offering is saying we understand that the blessings that we've been giving when it comes to monetary blessings can be used to enact beautiful and wonderful things. And we have our time of offering. Uh, the baskets are at the front. And I want to do just a little bit of housekeeping real quick, though, um, before I, I pray over that. Uh, so as y'all know, we have these really cool communion cups that we order, and we have these on a rotating um, order, and we order a specific number of those, and then they, um, they come in, we use those and everything. We, we have to be very honest with y'all that our math is not mathing. Uh, well, um, in the sense of we feel like we, we have enough, but we, we tend to start to run short, and, and numerically we should be, so, and I'm not getting on to anyone, please. Uh, I, I'm not doing that. So what I would love for you to do is just make sure that you grab what it is that you need for your family. Um, we have them in different numbers to, just to make sure. And if you say there isn't a one or a two and you grab, I grabbed a four and there's only one of me, uh, we're going to ask that you please try to get those three either back or when the offering basket goes by, you can put your unused, I'm going to say that one more time, unused cups in the offering basket and we will put those back in. The other thing that we would love to ask for you to do is sometimes you have a family of five and all five of your family says, I'm going to get communion for the family today. So if maybe you could just make sure that you designate that because we will order more if we need to, but we just wanted to just kind of lay that out there that, that we would love to see that, that money go into other places so we can continue to do that. So if you guys would just 
continue to be mindful of that. It would be so, so appreciative. I, I want to pray over our offering, and we'll continue on in our worship. God, we love you. And Father, let us all be Lydia's from that story, from that application. Let us say, let us look at our wealth. Let us look at our means. Let us look at what we have to, uh, that, that pushes us forward in our life. And let's say, hey, how can we turn this towards the kingdom of God? Be it through radical hospitality. Be it through giving without thinking about where it's even going because we're just devoted to, to what God is doing in the community and in this church, Father. May we give with a generous heart. May we understand that whatever wealth we are surrounded by, every single bit of it belongs to you anyway. And we give that to you with joy to see all of the beautiful ways that you're going to bless this community, Father, bless this church. Uh, and we thank you for this opportunity. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. As already stated, we have so much going on here at Gateway and um, so many ways to get plugged in and serve and, and just get active and, and get shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow with, with your fellow um, family member here and get to work. So if you're not plugged in, um, I, I encourage you to do that. And I'm just going to put a shameless plug in for us. I mean, I'm always looking for singers on the praise team. Notice I said singers on the praise team. So if you're tone deaf, we have the AV booth, so you can work back there. <laughs> and uh, we need people back there working, so you can <laughs> so you can do a knob or click a button or, or get get all the, the lights and everything going. Um, lots to do, but yeah, I mean we can always use singers and, and we love love to get new people and we have a good time. So let's all stand. We're gonna sing this song we sang last Sunday for the first time here. And uh, we're gonna sing this out and then hear from Seth. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas great. 
Good morning, church. I tried, I tried the table last week, and I felt like I was neglecting the right side of the room. Um, so I'm moving to the middle this week. I feel like I might have made some of y'all a little nervous last week, and I'll tell you why. Because every single text message I got for the entire week was like, hey, I'm so sorry to text you, but... And then it, it, it would go on. And if you're like, what are you talking about? I had talked about last week about how sometimes when we get texts on Friday nights as ministers, we, we cringe a little bit. But I realized that it had the opposite effect. And it just made me really lonely all week because no one would text me. And then in a very a normal, innocent mistake, when the, the wrong bulletin was sent out, I know it was killing some of y'all. I'm going to text him. But he told me not to. But I, and some of y'all did. <laughs> I'm going to text, so, so, please text me, you know, just maybe not at Friday night with an issue, that, that was the point there, that was the point, so as we continue on talking about next steps, this is our class that we normally offer for interested or new members, but we thought that over the month of March, it would be really great for us to share uh, what it is to be a member at Gateway, how we look at that. And so we spent some time uh, launching into the foundations of what being a member is last week. And I'm going to go a little bit out of order with what I normally do with the class and, and, uh, and what we're going to talk about today. But it's, it was this particular thought that Gateway membership is a functioning membership. And that we want you to be a part of a local body of Christ here at Gateway, and we want you to function within that. So what does that look like? How do we order ourselves in the community? How do we serve? How do we prepare and plan and vision and then implement work towards the kingdom way of living? Well, for starters, like, like Ryan had said, we have the things that happen within this building, our foundational times of worship with our tech and everything. We have foundational ministries like men's ministry and, and our soul sisters, our, our young at heart. There, there are so many of those. Now, we are going to talk about those, which are the inward foundational parts in two weeks on, on March 27th. We're going to talk about those. But what I want to talk about today are the things that we want to participate in that either we have and or are new that are part of who we are in the community. I want us to take a look at a very common phrase in church work where we tell you this. We want you to become a member and read it with me. Get involved. Get involved. Now, it makes perfect sense. Get involved. We want you to get involved. We want you to show up and get involved. It sounds like a really nice pitch for some good volunteerism, right? We want you to come, enjoy our worship, and we want you to do a few of the things that help us maintain our worship. But there's so much more than that. There are kingdom principles at work when we get involved. There are kingdom realities being formed in our lives, in our, in our community, when we do the work of the church. But see, this is where churches kind of miss it. And they're, they're starting, by the way, to, uh, to, to write books on this. And if you watched any of our uh, Envision series with the upper room and the lower room, which is available on YouTube... Uh, they talk extensively about this, but what you have with a lot of a lot of churches in their next step programs, it's about getting you to that place of membership, and then we just cross our fingers that maybe you'll teach a Bible class sometimes, or getting you into that place of membership. So it's like, all right, we're going to get you baptized. You're a member, and then what we need you to do is just occasionally volunteer sometime, and then it just kind of stops, and we're starting to realize that 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 does not generate kingdom growth. That does not generate kingdom change. That's actually the sort of mindset that can lead us into a place of kind of an entitled sort of worship that we talked about with our preferences and desires. When, when we, we don't just want good volunteers because we believe here that when you do the work of the church, we are taking part 
of the huge movement that God has put into practice from creation. We believe that when you serve in the name of Christ, you are changing the world. We believe that when you give a cup of cold water in Jesus' name, it's like you're giving it to Jesus. We believe when you teach a Bible class, you are teaching the next generation to fall in love with Jesus just as you fell in love with Jesus. We believe that when you are holding babies in nursery, that you are holding them with the love of Christ pouring out of you so their moms and dads can come in here and worship just a little bit. We believe that when you come on a Saturday and serve, or when you write an extra little bit of money because there is a need requested, we believe that that is kingdom work. This is not volunteerism. This is being who we are called to be in the name of Jesus. Why would we take something so huge and just reduce it to Sunday morning attendance and occasional volunteerism? Our events... Our programs and our ministries at Gateway are not auxiliary times of volunteerism. They are the vehicles for maturity and transformation for the life of the kingdom lived in the reality of our current community. At Gateway, we desire for you to be transformed, to grow, and all of our events, programs, and ministries are designed to bring you closer to God, to change your character to be more like Christ, and to reveal Christ to a community that needs it. When we keep that part of our work in our hearts, we can't fail in any ministry. Think about that. You can put all of the prep work that you want to into doing a meal for a group of people and one person shows up, kingdom work has been done. Kingdom work has been done because the world got changed for that individual. And guess what? That's who Jesus cared about in that moment. That's who Jesus placed in your path in that moment. You cannot fail. Because when we do things in the name of Jesus, guess who's the power behind it? Guess who's driving it? Us and our planning? No, the power of Jesus. This is the beauty of what ministry is. They don't fail because we're doing it because we want people to know Jesus. And here's the thing. A lot of times they might know Jesus through the screw-ups of what happened in the logistics. A lot of times they might get to know Jesus through a random conversation that you had while you were serving in something. That's how the power of God works. So when you go into the lobby and we're going to talk about what's out there... Those are already successful in the kingdom because the Spirit has opened up the doors for us to do those. That's beauty, which frees us to have joy. It frees us to have peace. It frees us to say, we get to do this in our community. But what happens? What happens if we stay in our Sunday morning only practice routine? What happens when church does come simply about attendance? And maybe how many events we can do going through the motions. What happens when a church decides that the problems of the world are too big for us to worry about? So let's just shore up our walls, create a nice little safe, comfortable space where we can worship Jesus in peace. What happens when we want to homogenize our church? What happens when we want to uniform our church to the point of sameness and focus only on the maintenance of stability, not the expectation of conversion? What happens when we say, I want my church to look like how I want my church to look, and anything that comes from the community that's going to change that, I'm going to resist because we need to keep this place the way that I've already intended to keep it. This is how the church grows. But now, that happens in Scripture. Of course it does. The story of Scripture is a bunch of humans hearing about all the great things that God wants to do and us being like, yeah, but we'll just kind of do it our way. That's the story of Scripture and the patient God who says, I'm going to keep loving you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fail. Isaiah chapter 58. That's where I want us to go today. That's our text. Because y'all know me at this point. I'm not going to just walk through all of our ministries in the lobby without giving you a theological foundation first. 
That's not how we don't do things just to do them in this church. We do it because we believe it's the purpose that God has given us. Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to take a look at what happens when our just standard church practices, maybe on a Sunday morning only, become the end all of what church should be. Gathering just to gather, not changing, not allowing our worship to inform our lives in the community. I'm going to tell you all right now. I'm about to read it. It's okay. So, I'm going to read the whole thing. I'm going to read Isaiah 58 because I, I, some of y'all, I, I love you, but you're not ready for Isaiah 58. Some of y'all are not ready for Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58 is one of those chapters that I like to read. I'm going to give a little commentary afterwards, but I like to read in its entirety so the force of the words of God will hit you, not the words of Seth. Okay, because Isaiah 58... I, I have to make myself read Isaiah 58 every couple weeks. I'm not joking. It's one of my favorite chapters. I have no idea why I decided to, to, to preach out of it for, for a reduced amount of time because I would love to do like I did last week and just go on and on and on and on about Isaiah 58 because it's that good. Listen to the words of the prophet. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. All right, so we got some sin. So what is the sin? For day after day they seek me out. They seem to be eager to know my ways, as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. That sounds interesting. What's the sin? Day after day they seek me out. They seem to be eager to know who I am. They ask me for just decisions, and they seem eager to, for God to come near them. Why, why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please, and you exploit all of your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast that I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fasting that I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe him and to not turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will protect your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always and he will satisfy your knees in a sun-scorched land and he will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose water never fails. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls and restorer of homes. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it not by going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the height of the lands and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Y'all put your hands together for the Lord's word. I'm sorry. I'm going to make you do that because this, I want you to think about how powerful this is. I want you to think about the fact that what we have here is a worship service. And you see that this chapter is not commonly read. 
But we have a worship service, and it says that the people seem to be eager. They seem to want to fast, but what are they missing? They're missing the essence of God that transformed who they are in the community. This chapter directly links authentic worship and authentic gathering to what happens when liturgy is combined with the reality of the world. Okay, and I, I know liturgy? That's a church word that we don't use. I want you to grab your bulletins. Grab your bulletins, and I want you to open up the page for me, okay? Yeah, I want you to. I want you, I want you to look at the left where it has the order of the songs we sing. That is liturgy. That is, that is an order of worship prayed over and prepared to bring you into the presence of God. That's it. So anytime you hear the word liturgy, it is an order of worship prayed over and prepared to bring you into the presence of God. Now, don't put your bulletins down yet. I want you to hold it. Here's what I want you to listen to now. Authentic worship happens when liturgy, what we sing and what we do, what you are looking at, informs how you're going to interact with the community. Your worship today, these songs, Mighty to Save, all of them, what you sang, what is listed in that bulletin, and the prayer, and the communion is going to interact with how you live in the community. It is going to change how you are in the community. It is going to change how you see people in the community. It is going to change how you view the world because you are being embodied by the Spirit. We do not sing into empty space. We sing to the God who has purposed us to change the lens by which we see the community. But we have run the risk of privatizing and singularizing our worship to the point that we are singing to a God who sent his son out of a never-ending love so we can be reconciled, unified, cleansed, and saved. And we have the audacity to leave that worship in this room and go about our business. How can we sing, everyone needs compassion, and then walk out and not give everyone compassion? How can we sing, people need Jesus, and then walk out and be like, they need Jesus, and keep going. Our liturgy informs who we are as a church because this chapter shows us how religion can be used to avoid the healing of God. This is not the world that the prophet's writing to. This is a church service. This is not us sitting in here going, yep, 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 let, let, let those non-Christians have it. This is Christians. This is people in a worship gathering who are like, God, why aren't you listening to us? We're fasting. We're doing all of this. And God says, because I know your heart, and I know it's not transforming you. I know you're not, being per you're, you're not living into what I have called you to do. So this shows what happens when we use religion to avoid healing. This chapter challenges the idea that a distant institutionalized response is enough. It challenges the idea that a detached religious experience can exist in your community. Because when you come to know Jesus Christ, you're going to be transformed into Christ daily, into the person of Christ. So what happens when our worship is informed? I mean, well, let's, let's look at the text. It starts out pretty general. When our worship begins to change us, when our liturgy begins to change us, we can loose the chains of injustice. We can untie the cords of the yoke. We can set the oppressed free and break every yoke. We can identify areas in the community that we can try to be a light in the name of Jesus. But then it gets even more specific because the prophet said, yeah, that's a little lofty. That's a little systemic. And y'all might be like, we'll let other people take care of that. And he says, all right, well, I'm going to bring it down to you. You're going to share your food with the hungry. You're going to provide the poor wanderer with shelter. You're going to clothe the naked. You're not going to neglect your family. But now here we run the risk sometimes when a preacher gets going and we get, we get really excited and we don't land this. So let's land this. Let's name this in the community right now. There are children in Escambia County who are food insecure because they don't have access to food. There are hungry families in Escambia. There are children in Escambia who cannot afford a backpack. There are children in Escambia County, and there are families that cannot put food on the table. There are families that send their kid to school, and their power's been off for three weeks. Okay? There are over 33 schools 
in Escambia County. You want to know how many churches there are? Over 400. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, if I'm going too much, I don't care. I'm going to. Because we're going to break. We have to break the stats. The church has to take this and say, well, you know, statistically, this many percentages of kids are hungry. Well, guess what? I'm a peculiar person that the Lord has empowered. I'm going to break that stat. And they can have that stat somewhere else. But in Escambia County, we're going to break that stat. And if there's a child that needs a backpack, let's buy them a backpack. This is not... This is, this is what it's calling us to do. How about this one? And I want to thank Jim Miller for this. 85% of single parents don't attend church. 85% of single parent homes don't attend church. Because being a single parent is exhausting and hard. Being a single parent is going to stretch us. How are we going to reach out to those single parents? That's the questions I want to ask. When we draw a circle around Gateway and we say, how many single parents live here? How many are there? And what can we do about it? And look, if you're like, well, Seth, there, there's probably too many to fix. No, we'll fix one. We'll, we'll love one. We'll love one enough to where they can come to the mom's ministry on Friday and just feel some fellowship. We will love them enough to where they can come here on a Sunday morning and one of us is going to rock their baby in the nursery so they can just sit and be in the presence of God a little bit. We have to be able to think that way. Is our worship designed to change our hearts towards this? But then look at what God says. I love this. Is, this is scripture. He says, when you do this, that's when your light will break forth. He says, your light. Luke chapter 11 says, when we're so full of the light of Jesus, it pours out of us. That's when the light will change. That's when your healing will appear. That's when the glory of God will protect you. In Acts, when they would go on the missions to where the churches were planted, it would say they saw the blessing of the Lord. That's what it would say. So they'd go to the church in Philippi, Macedonia. They would see the blessing of the Lord. What were they physically seeing? They were seeing Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4 in action. They didn't believe any of their possessions were their own. They gave freely. They shared. They loved. They created food programs for widows. They, create, they sewed dresses for widows with Tabitha. They found the oppressed and the needy, and they did something about it. It says in Acts chapter 4, they sold their property. They gave out of what they had. They had all things in common, and the blessing of the Lord was amongst them. So what were they seeing? What's the blessing of the Lord that they're seeing? The physical action of the church at work in a broken world. That's what they're seeing. Yes, they're got, people are going to walk in here. They're going to get a great worship because Ryan is so brilliantly talented. He, and and they, he leads a, a group of people whose hearts are amazing. And they're going to experience that. And they're going to be uplifted by that. Absolutely. Most of you came here because our Sunday mornings drew you in. We want you to stay for more. We want you to stay for the transformation. I love if-then statements because God says, I'm going to make it as easy on y'all as I can. If you do away with the yoke of oppression and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry, if you're taking notes, write that down and I want you to pray over that this week. What does it mean? And you ask yourself, how can I spend myself? Because the way I read it, it means that I need to be spending a lot more than I am. Time, money, whatever you want to call it, whatever God has put on your heart. But spend yourself on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed. If you do those, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. Then the Lord will guide you. Then you'll be a well-watered garden, a rebuilder of walls. And this one is my favorite. And I'm, I, I don't even know if I can do it without feeling the emotion. A restorer of homes. Can you imagine what our community would look like if people saw church buildings and they said, that's a restorer of homes. Whatever home is, can you imagine that? That, that, place, that place has something that restores homes, physical, spiritual, emotional, whatever it is. Are we a restorer of homes? So what is the consequence of this neighbor love? Restoration, healing, and redemption. This is why we give foundations to what we're going to talk about. Because we're going to apply this now. 
This, that's that's the, the theological part. And now I'm going to share some exciting things that we have going on here at Gateway. Things that are res- restoring, things that are healing. Because we're going to apply Isaiah 58 to who we are at Gateway. This chapter breaks down the idea that rote worship can exist without true transformation. These people were seeking God. They were fasting. But we have to continue to grow. Our membership is meaningful. So when we talk of being involved, you're going to hear that word because it's a natural word. We are not trying to run a glorified volunteer service to accommodate a Sunday morning. We are living out our worship through organized means of service that can impact our lives, the lives you come in contact with, and the community. And and yes, we want people to be so blown away when they interact with gateway people that they do want to walk through those doors. Not because we want gateway to grow, because we want the Lord's church to grow. We want the kingdom to grow. And when they walk into that door, they know they are walking into a kingdom outpost, a peculiar kingdom full of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I've got a broken home. Give us some chance to try to restore it with you. I come from this place. Let us walk with you. Isaiah 58 is functioning membership. When we plan this space, we pray that it would put us directly in contact with our community. Because guess what, church? You can't help the community if you're not proximate to the community. You can't help if we aren't engaging with those that are in our community. So we prayed ways that we could witness to Christ in all areas. We prayed over Acts chapter 1 where it says in Acts chapter 1, you're to go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the world. And we literally drew circles. We took, we said, what's our Jerusalem? The city we live in, Pensacola. Bam. What's our Judea? The county we live in, Escambia and Santa Rosa. And then go towards Alabama too because I know the Alabamians will be like, us too. All right. So we drew that too. Samaria. Why was Samaria such a big deal? Because that's where you're uncomfortable. So draw circles around the place. Maybe you're scared to go. And then to the ends of the world. This is what we pray. I was reading Brenda Salter McNeil's Roadmap to Reconciliation. He said, churches that thrive in communities are ones that when they get planted, they don't try to reinvent the wheel of ministry. They ask what other ministries are going on and ask how we can partner with those. And so that's what we did. And I'm going to tell you all right now. And I'm going to try not to get emotional. I've been carrying poor Dan. Dan got to see a side of me this week. A couple tears were shed because for two years I have been, I felt so crazy. I've drawn on walls. I'm seriously, if you went into the industrial boulevard and I prayed, I prayed that we would be able to do something like what we're doing today. And then the spirit said, relax, Seth, and then overwhelmed us with opportunities to serve. And that's what today is. Today is the opportunity I'm going to get to share with you ministries we've had in existence and ministries that we are starting because the spirit blessed something that began over two years ago. This is a beautiful day. Today's the day you get to go and you get to put your name next to the thing that you want to do. And that I am telling you, I also, by the way, felt a lot of pressure because I was like, man, if this day doesn't go well, I've dedicated two years. They're just going to be like, well, Seth, we tried. But you know, this is, I am so excited So I'm going to hit on these very briefly. You're going to be invited to go into the lobby as we conclude worship. And you're going to get to talk to ministry leaders who are as passionate about this as I am. They might not be as manic, but they're passionate about it and they're on fire. You're going to get to hear information. So there's, I'm, not going to go, I'm not going to go super duper deep into all of it because I want you to go talk to them. I want you to walk by every single table. You can sign up to participate or sign up just to get more information. Just put your name next to it. Some of these are things that you'll physically go to. Some of these are just you being willing to be someone we can call if a need arises. Simple as that. So it's not that we are piling up our calendar with events and programs. No, we've created connections that have put us in contact with needs in the community that can be as needed. 
So very briefly, you will see that we always want people to be engaged in our children's ministry. Liz's flight was canceled um, because she was visiting her sister, so she's not here today. But over by the children's wing, you can sign up for the training on the 20th. This is a massive, massive part of our ministry, and it very much has to do with community outreach because most people come to church to, to say what? We want to find something for our children. And, it's, and it brings us in. And then another one that is that we wanted to get going is our Gateway Gardeners. And our ministry leader is Randy McGilberry. Randy, are you in here? Did you step out? All right, he stepped out. There he is. There's Randy McGilberry. Gateway Gardeners is going to be uh, working with the, the grounds and, and, and keeping that, that nice. We wanted to get that started. Stop by the table and see him. Thank you, uh, uh, Randy. So one of the areas, and by the way, if you're, if you're wondering about like... Uh, Soul Sisters, men's ministry and stuff, two weeks. You have to come back, all right? One area of need in our community is our homeless population. For years, for years, Gateway has worked in this community, and we want to continue to do this. Every second Saturday, we prepare a hot meal. We have toiletry bags. We, uh, we have new items of clothing. We open up our showers for those that want to take place. We fellowship. We pray. We spend time with those uh, that want us to do that. This ministry can, can continue to expand, partnering with Opening Doors and Dream Center. You've seen the shoe drives that we've done. We have a perpetual donation board. There's always a need that you can fill. It's out in the corner right now, but it's normally in the gym. We eventually want to put it in the lobby. You walk in and you look and you can donate at any time and that's how you can be involved. On that same day, we have camps and corners. This was created in lieu of not having a permanent space. This is how passionate your ministry leaders are, Gateway. We didn't have a building, and they said, but we got to keep serving. So let's just go to them. And we created camps and corners, and it was so great, we still have camps and corners. And they bring them physical bread, physical items, and spiritual nourishment. So I want to invite Dave Langston and Derek and anybody else that's on the board of the, uh, that, that works with the uh, Second Saturday. Y'all stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up so everyone can see you. Come on, come on. No, that, Leslie, yes, Alicia, yeah, that, that's right, that's right. Y'all, there's, there's Bessie. Find them at their tables and talk with them. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. That's right, that's right, all the way down. But they're supposed to go to every table, David, so that, that should be okay. Another area of need in our community is we started looking at surrounding neighborhoods. The dream of the ministry we called Without Walls was to bridge gaps, create relationships, and to bring physical, tangible love to those that might never set foot in a building. And so this puts us in direct proximity to our neighbors at College Trace Apartments. It erases lines of division in all ways. It happens every couple of months. Uh, they have come to Trunk or Treat, Breakfast with Santa. It is a beautiful, beautiful ministry. Kelly Key, I'm going to invite you to stand up. She leads that, and her passion for Jesus is pure fire. So make sure that you stop by the Without Walls table and find out ways that you can help there. Um, our, our call tells us to go to the ends of the earth. And so Gateway is directly supportive of so many great missions in the world. Now, we support locally the Escambia Christian School, Hemsley Road Church of Christ, and Bayou Labatchery. Uh, we're involved in support with Mount Dora and the Scambia Westgate School. We support three preachers in the world. Two of those are in Guyana. We support uh, HM, uh, Latch Minarine, uh, and, and I apologize if I didn't do that right, and his son Joe, and we've done that for 20 years. We also support Yosis Pete, a dear friend who is the preacher at the Vilnius Church of Christ in Lithuania. So I want to go and invite Matt Bell and Mike uh, Barrington to stand up. They're right there. You guys stay standing for one second. Matt works tirelessly, passionately, and has the deepest abiding love for this particular ministry. Matt, stand back up. All right? He, look, he works directly with the Lithuanians year-round. The premier annual event is the Ruta Christian Camp. Children in Lithuania get to know Jesus through this in so many ways. So if you are interested in knowing more about how you can support, please stop by that. And in fact, we are about to lift it up because he told me today, Yosis has added two more to the Lord's church and has baptized Dana and, and Yolanda. Two more people were baptized in the church. So let's lift that up. That is amazing. That's the work that's being done over there. 
please stop by their table and see that. So we've also created our own mom's ministry. This is a time where mothers and their children can be together in community in various forms. They meet on Friday. Um, this ministry is welcoming to all moms in the community, from single moms to foster moms, and they find ways to support and love each other. There's wonderful, wonderful potential for growth here. I want to invite Christina Watson and Ashley Myers to stand up. Uh, if they are in here, right here, y'all make sure. Oh, we're clapping for them all now. See, uh, you earlier guys didn't get claps. Thank you guys so much. Guys, partner with them. And also on the video announcements, this is my fault. Um, they have a charcuterie and cards event, Soul Sisters in the Moms Ministry, March the 20th at uh, 6.30 p.m. here at the building. So make sure you go to that. Uh, wonderful, wonderful opportunity to serve there. So another need in our community. Now again, what, what, what did we do? We said, think about it. Who are the people that are in need? Who are the people that we can engage? And so we love to work directly with foster families and social workers that work in that field. Of course, we do our annual Christmas drive, but we are blessed to be able to partner with the First City Church in feeding foster families. And so what this is, is once a month, Gateway gets to be a location where foster families will come and get a free meal prepared by a restaurant at no cost to anyone. We just get to be here for them. Think about that. We get to be in direct contact with several foster families in the community in the name of Jesus. Such a beautiful connection there. Um, she is actually with the kids right now, but the ministry leader over that that you'll go and talk to is Jessica Medeiros. I know we're not supposed to pick favorites, but she's my favorite ministry leader. Um, uh, that's my wife, for those of y'all visiting. I forget. You know, uh, I'm not trying to create inner, you know, ministry turmoil. Uh, but it's a beautiful ministry that you can be a part of uh, uh, very, very easily. So as we think about our community and areas where we have children in need, I talked about the school systems. We are able to partner with the Workman Middle School, 1.3 miles up the road. You know, what their, you know what their biggest struggle is? You ready for this? Intermittent homelessness. I want you to just sit with that for a second. Intermittent homelessness in a middle school. Working with the Navigator program is going to give us a direct line to that school to provide clothes, school supplies on an ads needed basis. We now know if there is a child in that school that needs something, they can contact us and we can get that need filled. We can make sure that we're taking care of them. The idea is to have that direct contact. Now, Chris Penny is going to be the ministry leader of that, but he is not here today. So Amy Ray, is Amy in here? Uh, or she, she's with, there she is back there. Amy Ray is going to be graciously um, working that table. And Amy's also involved in every ministry we do. So um, she's a, a perfect person to stop by and talk with. We are also, and I know y'all are like, man, this isn't really a sermon anymore. I gave you the theology. This is the stuff that we're, we're doing. We're also going to have students come here. Okay, so we are, we are blessed to partner with the James B. Washington Education and Sports Incorporated Program, which provides mentoring through basketball and after-school tutoring for, children, for students in the community. They're going to be using our facilities on Monday night. In addition to that, they're hoping to grow, and we want to partner with them. If you are interested in helping through providing snacks, helping with the basketball, or tutoring. If those of you in math and science and all of that, we want you to stop by the table. I want to invite Mr. William Clay to stand up. Mr. William, if you'll stand up right there, this is William Clay. He has been working with Benny Washington for so long, so passionate about this program. We are going to have this right here. Please stop by his table and talk with him. Thank you, Mr. William. Now, these kids have parents, right? These students have parents. We said, how are we going to engage our parents in the community? How are we going to connect with them? So we're, we are thrilled to partner with Parent University. This is a fantastic community collaborative that supports families through parenting classes. We'll be hosting the event on March 26th here in this building, all right? First off, if you're a parent, you are invited to come. Simple as that. Secondarily, we want you to, you're going to stop by the table. We have LaSharon Wiley right here. Here is LaSharon. You're going to stop by the table. You're going to talk to LaSharon. You can find out all the ways you can help from meal planning to some child care to some hospitality here at the building or ways you can help in the future and even facilitate some of the parent classes. And all of this is done by asking parents in the community, what is it that you need? What is it that you need? And we get to house that here. A major part of our community is, of course, those that serve. Uh, in, the, in the armed forces, the AMEN ministry, that's the American Military Evangelizing Nations. 
is a mission that connects service people with local churches all over the world or equips them to plant their own church or start a church, whether it be on a ship or on a base or something like that. Terry Jenton uh, is back here in the corner. Uh, Terry is the ministry leader, has a deep passion for that. Please stop by. So here we also have a very large community of veterans. And so that's another area. How do we offer help? We are pleased to say we're going to be hosting the, vet, the Department of Veteran Affairs whole health classes. The whole health classes are for the mind, body, and soul. And they offer this variety of classes to assist individuals with their mental, physical, and spiritual health. The VA has also graciously offered these classes to us. We can participate in these classes as well. I want to invite uh, Ray Baum to stand up. Ray, go on and stand up. Ray is the Veterans Health Education Coordinator. Uh, he would be so happy. He's going to be leading that program. But then I'm also going to invite the man sitting right next to him. Jim Miller is our gateway contact for that mission. What an excellent way to, to, to get in there. And of course, Ray, I want to thank you so much for worshiping with us today and giving us some of your time. You guys, please stop by and talk with them. Ray, I'm going to let you sit down, but Jim, you guys stay standing, okay? Jim is available to talk about the Christian Singles Ministry, which is for all ages and is focused on church-based events and various outings in the community. 52% of people here are, are in, in, in America are single. And there's a lot of ways that churches do neglect that, and we miss that. We miss fire on that because we tend to focus sometimes in other ways. And we want to make sure we have avenues where they feel comfortable and where we can meet their needs. And then, of course, we talked about the fact that 85%, there's 85% of single parents uh, here in this area. We are thrilled to say we're hosting the Middle Tennessee Singles Conference in June of this year. Hundreds of people from all over the nation are going to be worshiping here and doing a conference here uh, in June. So you want to grab a flyer. You want to register for that today with Jim right over there by that table over there. So uh, thank you, Jim, for that. We're, we're wrapping it up, okay? We're blessed to offer counseling services and various counseling resources. We have two individuals that, are, that, that worship with us at Gateway that offer counseling, Peggy Besh and Benny Hunton. Um, if you guys are in here, you can go on and stand up. There's, there's Peggy right there, and there's Benny. This ministry exists to meet the needs of those in Gateway's church on all. Uh, all issues they may go through. Now, there are various groups offered during the week. There's grief counseling, and then we're also working with Kevin Bryan on, on getting ready to launch some recovery uh, aspects uh, here at the building. And then there's also the Mental Health First Responders Program, which allows you to receive training as a first responder as we minister to those around us. Their table's right outside. Please stop by and talk with them. And lastly, this building is beautiful and incredibly usable. Right? We have already housed several meetings, workshops, and we hope to do more. Next week, our shepherds, because we're going to be talking about spiritual leadership at Gateway, will share how we've been able to bless the community in the name of Jesus by providing space for various organizations, churches, and more. What a blessing it is to be able to use our physical building as a direct output of help in the community. In order to organize this, uh, back here we have Ron McKinney as our ministry leader of Community Connections which will be the way that the community can use this space. Uh, and, and he has the process it goes through if it is available. If you are interested in joining his hospitality team, those that could be here when another group is here, learning some basic stuff with tech, cleaning, you know, after some of these events, please stop by and see him. Church, this is Isaiah 58. Now look, you might have just heard a laundry list of stuff. That's not what this is. What this is is opportunities for us to enact changes within our community, not because we have to, but because we love Jesus and we want people to know him. We want to look into our community and say, how can we reveal where God is at work? This is getting involved. And you heard it. Not all of them are things you have to go to. Some of them, you just you become a contact if there is a need. 
We don't want to add to your busyness or your stress, which is why hopefully you've never heard me shame you. I'm not going to sit up here and be like, you better sign up. No, I want you to want to because what did it say in the text? It's a joy to serve the Lord. It's a delight to serve the Lord. It is, it is who we are made to be when we honor the Sabbath, when we honor worship that changes us. This is what we are called to do. What a beautiful thing it is to let our liturgy inform how we want to be in the community. And so when we connect our worship to our lives in radical ways, and we connect our worship to revealing Christ in the community, it says in the text, we can experience healing and restoration. That's what the world needs. If we spend ourselves, then we can be restorers of homes, restores of homes. If you are interested in placing membership here at Gateway, you're participating in the class we'd ask you to go to. On your bulletin, there's a QR code. You just scan that with your phone, fill that out. If you're like, I'd rather not do that, you can grab a physical form from the Connect Center and fill that out as well, and we'll be in touch with you. Don't forget, when you leave here today, walk past the tables, linger, and it's going to be a little inconvenient. It's going to be full. Good. That's what we want. Walk past the tables. Talk to these ministry leaders. Sign up for ways that you can be involved. Find out what you're passionate about. If there is anything that we can do for you, if we can be a restorer of a home for you, if we can do anything for you, if you are ready to be baptized and you want to talk more about that, our baptism is broke right now, but we'll talk about it. Um, but uh, if, if you want to, 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 to just, just have a prayer of praise lifted over you, you can go to this table here. You can go to that table there. You can come meet me up here as we stand and as we sing. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My the 
take just a moment of your time here to come before you rather than having one of my brother elders uh, talk about my own brother personally. Most of you are probably aware of uh, what I'm dealing with with my older brother, Greg. Uh, my 78-year-old brother, Greg, who is a volunteer chaplain, 78-year-old brother, Greg, a volunteer chaplain with the Redmond Police Department out in Redmond, Oregon, going out on calls all hours of the day and night, literally, and contracted COVID as a result of that about a month ago. Uh, he's been fighting for his life. The doctors don't say he's gonna make it. Uh, he's been released to be at home on hospice, and they've said that he's probably got two to 14 days. Now, they say, interestingly, that given time, although his lungs have been ravaged, that given time, his lungs would probably heal, but they don't think he's got that time. So I'm here before you asking, because you all know the power of prayer, and you know the God we serve is an amazing God. And I know there are some of you out there who your lives are testimony to confounding doctors. So I hope that we can confound the doctors out there who say he doesn't have a chance, and I want you to lift my brother up in prayer in the coming days and weeks uh, that we get some kind of miraculous healing here for my brother. Teresa and I and uh, our son Jonathan will be flying out this afternoon. Uh, to Redmond. I don't know when we'll be back. Obviously, I pray, uh, want your prayers for us for safe travel. Uh, the Jerzak clan from various parts of the country, Indiana and Michigan, will be traveling in the coming days, and I want your prayers for their safe travels out there, and hopefully a joyous ending to this. Shards and Charcuterie and Cards Ministry. Wow. I have two names here, my sister-in-law, Carol, and my brother's daughter, Gina. I would love if y'all would flood their mailboxes with cards and letters of encouragement. They are seriously in need of being lifted up at this moment. It's a grim picture, and I hope that this congregation will amaze them with the outpouring of love from here. Thank y'all. I'm going to miss you. I don't know when I'll be back. Pray for us for a safe journey and a, hopefully a happy return. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. We'll definitely be praying for that. I do want to, uh, we're going to shift gears just a little bit, a uh, little bit of excitement. We have several new members that we want to announce to you guys. So, so excited. The first is uh, Renee Jackson. Renee, where are you at? We have going and stand up. Renee, guys, this is Renee Jackson. She comes to us from Harper Hills. So glad that she is here. Um, and I did not, so if it's a surprise, is, is, is Judy France here? Did I, did I get her here today? Okay, well, then, uh, go to the next picture for me. This is, this is Judy Fran. She's also placed a membership. We're going to announce her again when she comes, so that'll be, that'll be good. Okay, um, we're excited to have Carrie Farley. Carrie Farley, right over here. Yes, yeah, such a blessing to have her here. She'll quickly become our favorite Farley. Um, I kid, I kid, I kid. Thank you so much. Uh, it's so wonderful to have her here. I also want to announce my close personal friend, Raymond James, and his family. Um, yeah, y'all stand up. Come on, come on. Raymond, uh, his children are Michael, JJ, Ray Nibia, and Zamari, and he brings a lot of his other family. And if you don't know, Raymond was one of the custodians at Booker T. Washington that made our stay there so amazing. Uh, such a blessing to have them be here. Um, and then we are always excited to get people to come back. Always excited. So I want to invite uh, Andrew and Anna to stand up. Andrew and Anna Burge and James and Kaylee. Um, Andrew set an alarm on his phone 7 o'clock Friday night to send me a very encouraging text message. <laughs> It was the sweet. It was great. I loved it. I loved it. It was great. So wonderful to have them uh, uh, to have them back. Um, and, and that is a time of rejoicing. But there's also a time of, of sadness that, that uh, in this next announcement. But um, when we interact with people through these various ministries, when we when we get to spend time with them and we get to know them, we want to offer them the love that we can, um, and we meet them. But then, then things can occur, and so uh, a month ago, we met a gentleman named Joseph Orocho, uh, and he connected through the community outreach uh, ministry. He had been attending. He came on Sundays. He came to the Super Bowl party. He was a gentle soul, um, and he, he passed away this week. Um, he was only 33. Uh, he has uh, three children, um, but one of the things that I do want to, to just briefly share is 
When he, when he passed away, he had one more paycheck left over, and his employees have our, are contacting Gateway to say that he kept talking about this Gateway Church of Christ for the last month, and they don't know what else to do with the money, which is, it's, it's, a, it's beautiful and it's sadness, but at least that's what we're talking about. Sometimes we're just going to be the presence of Jesus for people for short moments. Sometimes we're going to be the presence of Jesus for people, and they might make a decision that puts them in a scenario that separates us. It doesn't stop us from loving them in the name of Jesus. And that's what we're called to do. So we want to lift up uh, his family um, and, and Ed's family. We want to rejoice with the new members and stop by the tables. I'm going to invite Scott to come up and close us up, and we'll continue on. Well, I tell you, it's been a great day, and I'm glad I was here. And, and I hope you uh, heard the message today that uh, we want you to stay around and uh, Find something you can do to better our kingdom and something that can transform your heart. Whatever you're passionate about, whatever you're passionate about, we want you to uh, to get involved with that. Um, got a special announcement today. We have a young lady that's uh, just uh, just has celebrated her 95th birthday. And I think we need to say something about Audrey Sebastian. We thank 90, 90. Where's Audrey? Audrey in here. a milestone and uh, we're certainly excited to, to share that with our, uh, our family and uh, we pray if you're visiting here that you've seen something you like you will contact one of us and let's talk with you and make sure you get your contact information or we can't contact you okay so uh, you got to give us that information if you don't want to talk to us just fill it out on your uh, scan this on your uh, uh, bulletin and uh, fill it out let's go to God in prayer God, we're so thankful, Lord, to be here today. We're so thankful, Lord, that uh, Lord that we, we we can transform our heart, Lord, and we can desire to be more like you, and Lord, and be the, the body of believers that, that you want us to be. Lord, we're all sinners here. We know we're all forgiven. And Lord, let's help us to have the passion for people, passion to uh, transform people, and uh, Lord, especially people that haven't heard the gospel. God, we have special requests that you'll be with Joseph. Uh, Lord, he just thought so much of us, Lord, and uh, just took his life this week. And uh, God, we're just uh, so sad about that. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that uh, you will give his family, whoever they are, uh, the peace that uh, you can give them. God, I pray you'd be with Ed's, his brother and his family as, it be, as, they, as they travel. And God, we have others uh, that are listening to the bulletin, Lord, that are... Um, there and uh, God help us to pray daily, daily for those people. God, just be with us as we go through the, the booths today, and uh, God help us to, Lord, uh, realize that our Christianity is more about church attendance. It's Lord, it's about transforming people, Lord, about getting in people's lives. Lord, it's your name we pray. Amen.